Hello, interwebs. I am Sebastian from investcomics.com here in the back of Famous Faces and Funnies and Get Your Fun On. And this is Fick. All right. Don't blink or I, I could die. I'm not even going to turn around and ignore. I'm, I'm not going to give her the satisfaction. I'm not going to do it. It's not in me. All right. First up on this week's review list Superboy, number 27. It was it was an okay story. I mean, it's it's Marv Wolfman. He, 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 he can write. He knows he knows he knows how to write. He's done this kind of thing before. However, he's writing with broken toys that I don't care about, and uh, neither, neither should anybody. Um, the schizo character just seems kind of I don't know, kind of half thought out and 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 lazy and. Um, and, I don't know, Superboy and Raven are both scheming against the, um, the Titans, and they've got their agendas, because you've got the John Kent Superboy, and Raven knows, but Raven's got her own plans for the, it's just, can't we just have a team that has good guys that are actually good guys? Do we need all this? You know, it's like, yay, Peter Parker's coming back in Spider-Man. So instead, we'll have a villain pretending to be Superboy over here. So it's like the superior, super, it's superior boy, right? And it just doesn't, it, it doesn't. There's nothing left to connect to, is what I'm telling you. Um, in fact, you're not even rooting for this character. There's no. I don't know why I'm reading this. Um, is, 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 that's probably. It is, you know, is it Superboy, and I'm desperately holding out for, for something good. I will say, um, the art is nice, and Raven, while in that horrible New 52 costume, that even if they just change the mask, it's something, other than that just weird, white feathered face, I, it, uh, you know, the traditional Raven colors of blue and white. Um. I don't mean Raven the character, I mean actual Ravens. Because you know, you've seen a lot of blue and white. You know, all the blue and white Ravens you see, they're everywhere, right? The blue Ravens are white fit. Makes sense. But <clears throat> the shadow effect, I don't know, Marv Wolfman writes a book, and suddenly the artists draw, you know, Raven looking like, you know, Raven, or as Raven-like as that costume will let it get. But that's that's a Raven teleporting in and out power effect going on right there. I don't know. So, so there was that. Um... Cataclysm Ultimate Comics The Ultimates is a lot to say for a time, but it's it's okay. I, I, you know, I'm digging the Ultimates. I like what they've solicited for post this. I want to see how this ends. This introduces um, the Ultimate Comics universe uh, Machine Man, who is a familiar face from the regular well, Alt Machine Man we know in regular you know 616 Marvel, and the person who is Machine Man in this is not Aaron Stack. But is another face from the 616. But is it, it? I liked it. It was like okay, that was that was cool. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm I'm digging this whole story, and I really think I'm gonna read more Ultimate Comics titles post Cataclysm than I've ever because I I never read them. You know, I read them, but I never bought them or liked them. Um, didn't like any of Mark Millar's Ultimates because mostly because I just have never really liked much of anything that Mark Millar wrote. Um, I like that one heist story that he did with some super villains, super crooks. As, yeah, super crooks. Um, I liked I liked that a lot. Um, and that Jupiter's Legacy thing, when it comes out, is is okay. Um, but I think a lot of that is I like quite Lizard. But I'm reviewing books that aren't even here. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. But uh, but yeah, this is good. Nova number twelve was pretty good. Nova dunks up. He he backs the wrong horse. He he helps the wrong people and makes things more complicated. Um, but as much as you know, in this particular case, I wanted to be. I actually wanted to be like a whiny baby fanboy, and I wanted to say, but "That's not Richard Ryder. I want Richard Ryder back. Give me back real Nova." <laughs> but I I don't care. I'm fine with Richard Ryder being that this sand kid. I like he's it's handled well. I like him. I don't know what to tell you. Um, although with him being like the only member left of the Nova Corps, he is just like a thirteen. He is the thirteen-year-old Kyle Rayner of the Nova Corps. Um, <laughs> you know, he gets the special helmet and powers. You know, as like Kyle got the ring that you know, 
yellow, yellow. I don't, I don't need to be afraid of no stinking yellow. So he, you know, he's got the extra boost. He is the Kyle Rayner, the 13-year-old Kyle Rayner of the Nova Corps in the Marvel Universe. Um, and we all know Kyle's got his own book right now, and people love him. So good on you, Sam. Earn that legacy. Justice League 3000 number two. It, uh, Kevin McGuire, you, you dodged a bullet. Um, I really wanted to like this, see, because it says, it says Keith Giffen and J.M. Dimitis, all right? I like them. They're like gods in my world. Ragnarok has come, babies. <laughs> oh, did I say Kevin Maguire? Look where he is. Why, he's over here on the Guardians of the Galaxy. Fucking awesome. This issue was so good. I mean, it's Kevin Maguire. So you've got express. Like, look at this. It's, I'm not going to make you look at it. No. Magic hands. Go ahead, look at it. Just close up of Gamora's eye. Looking up like, a, oh, I'm about to kick your ass now, giant monster guy. A panel of an eye, and he can give it so much. So It says so much with, it's just a wordless panel of an eye. Oh, and that's not Gamora's, that's, um, that's Angela's eye. Um, I mean, no, no, that's Gamora's that's eye. I, 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 I'm lying. I'm lying about lying. Uh, they both have weird eye makeup things going on in space. Uh, I don't know what's, you know, I don't know what's telling you. Avon gets into space a lot, and it's whatever. But the expressions are great. The, the panels are gorgeous. Um, who colored this? He wondered aloud and couldn't find the pages because it's a Marvel book, and they just shoved that kind of information all sorts of whirly nearly. Um, Justin Ponzer. Hey, it's Justin Ponzer. Hey, we know that guy. Um, and it's all, Justin got to work with Kevin McGuire. Damn you, Justin. I'm so jealous of you. Um... But it's great. The story is great. Um, it's basically uh, it's 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 a girls' night out. Only these girls don't go out for you know shopping or or spas or clubbing. They go out and just kick the shit out of an entire um, race of of slave traffickers, like you do. Um, and eventually, a very bewildered but highly impressed rest of the Guardians of the Galaxy catch up to them. So it's just uh, Gamora and and Angel kicking ass and taking names. And who'd have thought that Angel coming to the Marvel Universe would be something I'd like and enjoy? I would, let me see how, when I would have guessed that. Never. I would never have guessed that. In fact, I would have not guessed and been fairly accurately, fairly positive to say the opposite. Um, and I would have been wrong. That wouldn't have been the first time. Batgirl 27, Gothtopia. <laughs> I like the Gothtopia story. All right, so we've got um, Batgirl, uh, who is Bluebell, and her partner, who we know in the regular DC, DCU, or is it the regular, is it in the new 52 DCU, who we know as um, Nightfall, is called Daybreak in this. See, because she's positive, and instead of trying to destroy Batgirl, she's Batgirl's partner, and they're buddies. And they take on a woman who is Joker-esque. Uh, she works for a company called Joker Ice Cream, and they, their logo is the, you know is that clown playing card that the Joker always uses. But she's insane in this world because she remembers the real Gotham. She remembers the real world. She remembers a tragedy that befell where she was waiting for her family and got a call that said that they were gone, they were dead, they'd been killed in some typical Gotham violence. But whereas everyone else is... No, seeing happy, bright, shiny, and it's amazing. Um, you got to give it up to not just the art um, uh, by Robert Gill, but once again, let's go for a colorist. Uh, blonde. The colorist's name is Blonde. Um, so I think it's a Reservoir Dog is doing some of the color. <laughs> I'm not not sure. We got Mr. Blonde on, uh, on, on I don't know, but we got Blonde on coloring. Great job of making Gotham. And everything, everything is bright. Everything is, and it it works, you know, within. But at the same time, 
they manage to make it look natural for the panels that are happening, but make it bright enough that you know this is not your dirty, you know, Batman sitting on a gargoyle Gotham. Um, so it was good, very good. Forever Evil, Rogue's Rebellion, number four of six. Still my favorite of the Forever Evil tie-ins. Best thing done with the Rogues since the new 52. Loving them. Um, I want them to get their own book. Give the Rogues their own book at this point. Only thing I'm not happy with is these new <coughs> new 52 um, Royal Flush Gang. They all wear like a lot of people in the D there's a lot of people in the DCU wearing these hockey masks they now. Get them like Arrow. There's like a you know there's like Mad yeah there's like Mad Dog. There's these guys. There's um Sports Monster. And yeah, and there's somebody else in. In Suicide Squad, warrant. They're all wearing these damn masks. It, it's like there's a place selling them wholesale. Um, the, the hockey mask. You know, if if Jason Voorhees came to the DCU, you'd never get know it. You'd everybody'd be dead. They'd never see him coming. But what also makes me nuts is they have, you know, they're all like aces and 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 jacks. And yet they call this guy. He's got a, there's an A on his face. He's sitting on a throne looking thing with. With um, this big A, and they call him King. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know what. I'm not the greatest card player in the world. The Ace isn't a King, and the King doesn't have an A on it. Definitely, just, just putting that out. There. I, I miss the, the the real ones. Um, but a great battle of them versus Batman rogues and. And all sorts of stuff going on, and, and Mirror Master trying to step up to be a leader and fe feeling that he's not doing it right. And uh, so much fun, so much fun. Black Dynamite. He's punching a shark because it's a subscription version. Ha ha ha, shark punch. All right, they got a bad guy in here called Too Swole. <laughs> he's Too Swole. He's all rippling muzzles, and he he hurls Grandma Graham and her grandson Little Keith. Oh no! But it's like self-aware black exploitation. Uh, by the end, the people drive uh, Black Dynamite away because the community can't handle. You know, people stop being two-bit hoods and start stepping up their game so that they can make a rep by taking on. Uh, you know, like dynamite. So he goes on a a journey of of self discovery, um, which leads us from when's it open? Like 1969 or something? No, 1976. So it opens in in 76, and uh, then it drops back to it just says a number of years earlier. So somewhere probably in 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 the late 60s or early 70s, or, or like, yeah, somewhere in between like 69 and 70, I'd imagine, is when the bulk of this issue takes place. Really good. Lots of fun. Um, Uncanny X-Men, number 16, Magneto. He goes on a little journey of self-discovery and finds out oh yeah, what's going on in Madripoor and that it's all being run by Dazzler? No, it's not really Dazzler. No, he's not the Dazzler. It's um, Mystique, um, who is who has taken Dazzler out for the moment and has replaced her so that she can manipulate Shield as she sees fit. And um, Magneto's pissed, <laughs> and this leads to I don't know if he's even going to be in Uncanny X Men anymore. Because by the end of this, he doesn't go back to them, and it says. Uh, Magneto will be seen next in Magneto number one, so this is him going off on his own, and you can see it's he knows what he is. You know, he's you know he's he's a bad guy and a good guy. You know, he he knows what he wants, and he knows and he he says right out, look, you know, Charles Xavier's dream was coexist, you know, co cohabitation, humans and mutants. My dream was that we rule over them like they're betters and they're overlords. And he, he makes no apologies for that. Um, he's like, look, I'm tired of the suffering. 
but I'm more than willing to cause suffering back as you know as a payment. And um, and yeah, Magneto series is going to be written by Colin Bunn, so I'm on it. Well, it's going to have art by that uh, Walter guy, so bittersweet. Yeah. Inhumanity, the Superior Spider-Man, number one. I think this is a one shot. So good. Christos Gage. I love that man. He can write anything. To weep. Um, so good. Um, touching moment for Doc Ogg. It's nice because now that we know he's going away, it's nice to see these moments where um, it's delivered so well that, yeah, he's an arrogant ass, and yeah, he's a bad guy, and yeah, he's killed people, and he tried to kill the whole world, and he, regardless of how temporarily, did kill Peter Parker for all intents and purposes. Um, <coughs> you still see that there, there is, you know, I feel like Luke Skywalker. There is good in him. I can feel it. Um, he won't turn me over to his emperor. Oh, he doesn't have an emperor. Shit, I'm, I'm, I didn't think this through. Um, so, he, there, there is, and you know, it, and it ends with a nice nod to, he goes from all sorts of superior and arrogant to, um, you know, this, the fire department is, is trying to, you know, he's helping the fire department with the post fall of the new gods, uh, fall of the in, inhumans crap. And at one point, you know, he's barking out all these orders, but by the end, he's telling uh, his spider agent guys, you know, to, to, you know, firemen will secure the scene, you're here to assist them in any way they deem fit. Is that clear? You will treat them with respect and follow their commands to the letter. Today they are your superiors. And then as he swim, swings away, he adds, and mine. Because he realizes just because he knows more than most people doesn't mean he knows better than everybody. Oh, that sounded deep. Um, Amazing X-Men, The Beast Unleashed. It's Nightcrawler, he's back, and he's fun, and he's Nightcrawler, and they're going to give him his own series, but they're going to let Chris Claremont write it, so it'll make no damn sense and feel very stilted and archaic. But, Chris Claremont loves Nightcrawler, so, you know, they still do some cool stuff with him. Sorry um, about <laughs> Until he's chased away by angry mobs of fans with torches and pitchforks. But um, Todd Knox is going to draw it, and that'll be good. But to the book at hand. Pretty crazy. All right. Jason Aaron. We already know I love Jason Aaron. He can write whatever the hell he wants. He's right up there on a Christos Gage esque level. Um, and, uh, you know, in my world, it's important to know. In my world, these are the. These are different different uh, days. Christos Gage, Jason Aaron. These, these, these are the. Your pantheon. Yes. This is my pantheon. <laughs> but Nightcrawler. <coughs> he's back, and you already know why you missed him, all right? And Nightcrawler and the the Nightcrawler and Storm scenes are are great. You, you know, you, you can almost cry. Nightcrawler does. He's, Please, can we not do this right now? I can't fight pirates if I'm crying. That's a line. Nightcrawler says that. Um, but I will let you know right now, the greatest panel drawn in a comic book for the year 2014. I know we're only a little bit in, but I think. This will still be in the top ten by the end of, of, of 2014. Magic hands, if you will. Uh, kindly to show the nice people at home. The Nightcrawler reveals himself to Storm and the uh, the Demon Pirates. Just look at him in the Bamps, and he's just like, Yeah, I got my swashbuckle on. Yeah! This is the guy who used to wear an image inducer that made the world see him as Errol Flynn in a trench coat. Yeah, baby! Um... So good. And Beast is pissed, and there's not gonna, you know, Nightcrawl is asking for a hug, but Beast has kind of lost it. So, next issue is gonna be Blue and Fuzzy versus Blue and Fuzzy. Um, because there's just a lot of X Men in the Marvel Universe, here's the all new X Men. Um, God help me, I like this book. I don't know when, I mean, you know, Bendis just used to not do it for me. But Bendis, and I think you know what it is, it's ongoings. Dendis on limited series and Marvel events, he can't stick the landing. Bendis, I don't like Bendis endings because they he ends on a meh. But Bendis on where there's no he starts out strong and he has great middles and great segues and sideways and upways and downways and throughways, but he ends with meh. It's just what he does. It happens. It's hard to end something, especially if you wrote really well the whole way through. It's hard to write an ending that lives up to that great follow-through. But, 
unending stuff, there's no meh. He doesn't have to get to the meh. He just goes, boom, 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 boom. So it's phenomenal. And the art is, is, is real, real nice. And Kitty is badass. And yeah, and who knew that I could, you know, get behind the idea of what's going on with um, with X-23 and, and Cyclops. And, you know, they got a kind of a little affinity. Who knew? I'm, I'm down with that. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Darkest Hours, The Superior Spider-Man, number 25, by Slot, and Gage. Oh, what? Chris knows Gage. So there, and Slot and Gage work well together. Anyway, um, I'll say it, now that we know it's coming to an end, I'll say it. I, I was a, oh, hell's no, at the idea of this. Um, I was a, a hell's no kind of guy. I was, I was a naysayer. That's what I'm looking for. Um, then I read it and I was like, eh, it's not that bad. It should be over soon. Then it was like, no, it's not going away soon. And I was still fun. I was like, okay. I'm like, I knew he'd be back. All right. Yeah, dear interwebs, you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to bitch that, well, we know he's coming back. Oh, he better come back. They better bring him back. And then when they bring him back, still bitching. Predictable. Knew it was coming. But you got what you wanted. What, what, what are you still bitching for? Why? Why? Why are you still bitching? Just stop with the bitching, Internet. No bitching. It'd be awesome if I got a whole bunch of posts of people bitching about my telling you not to bitch. It'd be very meta. Meta irony. I don't know. You will. Hashtag meta irony. I want that to trend on the book of face. Um, this was really, really good. And the Avengers have now cracked the... Wait a minute. Because it's Tony. It's Tony who goes, wait, because everybody else checked, you know, Wolverine senses. It's still, he's still, you know, Peter, you know, I can sense. For some reason, I don't know. At this point, I'm confused. They, everyone knew who, all the, everyone knew who, who Peter Parker was Spider-Man. Then everyone didn't. Then he revealed himself to the Avengers. Now some of the Avengers are still not known, and I'm, I'm, I'm confused as to how that's possible or who knows what at any given moment. It's like on Tuesdays, we know he's Peter Parker. But Wednesdays through Sundays we don't, and Mondays depends on our mood. I, I don't, I don't understand. Um, but whatever. They they start to catch because everybody's like, yeah, we ran the test that said it was, you know, because they ran DNA tests and he's not a scroll, he's not this, it's not magic based, it's not whatever. And then Tony's like, you know, wait, you did what? You know, there's other shit. You know, I've got equipment that'll test for stuff beyond just, like, you know. We get mind control all the time. We're, we're superheroes, people. You know, it could be anybody. So let me check some other things. Um, so, yeah, he's going to have uh, the Goblin War, and then there'll be some Avengers starting to catch on. And, yes, this issue you know, is, has the first return of Peter Parker. All right? Ghost Peter is back, and he's, you know, making his, making, making his way. Mercy Sparks number three, so good. I love Mercy Sparks, Josh Blaylock. Um, so so damn good. The art in this, who, who did this? Is it, what's his name? Uh, Matt Matt Merhoff. Is to gorgeous. The lettering for the angels, also. To, Mercy stuck as a person for most of this issue as a human. Can't do the you know, the demon form thing. Not liking it. She's never had a hangover before. She's never. You know, had felt you know pain before, gotten her ass kicked in a fight. Um, there's a moment where she's lying on the couch and realizes, does this mean I can get fat? <laughs> you know, it's just you know she's never had to deal with, you know. And then you know by the end she's normal, and it's like you know and even a little a little sidekick friend kid is like, uh, like and the moral of the story, kids, is you never have to worry about consequences. You know, so good, so much fun. You should read that. Lenore. This is like Lenore, year one. This is the, this is the origins of Lenore, as told by uh, Mr. Taxidermy. Who, it, he's the reason. She's still, um, she's still alive uh, because, well, she's not alive, she's like undead. Because um, he broke the laws of death. He felt bad for her and her, and her parents. And 
preserve this little girl. And uh, it didn't quite go so well, and that's why she's the little knower we all know and love. So it's good stuff. Ego, number one, from Das Image. Um, it's good. It's a the Ego, the Earth Galactic Operatives. It's like a sci-fi superhero-esque aspect. Um, it's Stuart Moore and, and Gus Storms. The art, Gus Storms does the art and the color. It, it took me a bit. It's um, it's a bit rough, and part of it is style, but part of it, you know, part of it just it gives it that look of. Uh, some of it is definitely stylized, and some of it just gives that look of someone who who, who hasn't quite, you know, mastered the you know the art of form. Um, but it, it, it works and it gives it um, a kind of almost like uh, Keith Giffen dirty trench coat legion of superheroes look um, and that works for this particular you know futuristic storyline anyway but it's heroes who are they're not the inf infallible heroes that everybody thinks they are and they're, they're very fallible but they they live that image and they they you know they have their their major foibles and they're they're trying to do what they can. There are a lot of cool characters in here, a lot of interesting concepts, um, and I really like the look of this one guy that I thought was the big bad, but then they tell you part way through and it's not. You know, so this Quark guy, I, I like I like his look. He's just kind of not all he's he's not all there, but not like crazy, but like physically he's not all there, and it's, it's kind of cool. X Files. I got a glow in the dark crow. Um, X Files conspiracy. This is IDW's big multi-property crossover. The um, lone gunmen get a bunch of encrypted files, and they're from the future. And in order to help stop this virus that's happening, that has metal growing out, that at first Mulder doesn't believe them, but when he shows, when they show him the files, one of the photos they're looking at is from the scene that just happened and he just stepped away from he's like no one had time to put that in, a, in, in print yet how the so he buys in but it, it it leads them to they're going to check in on um, these Ghostbusters in New York to see if they're real or fraud um, they're going to check in on a story about giant Ninja Turtles in, in the in the sewers they're going to check out about um, a rumor that um, aliens have invaded by disguising themselves as cars and other um, electronic equipment, and stories of spirits bringing back the dead um, for revenge. Hence my glow in the dark crowd. Um, so it was good. You know, it's 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 the X Files investigating some of your favorite other other you know properties. So that's pretty damn. It's cool already. Sixth Gun number thirty-seven will always be the greatest thing and you should read it and I don't know why you haven't yet I tell you all the damn time go buy six gun trades go buy the issues and then send me emails that say oh my god Sebastian why did it take me so long to listen to you um, probably because you're a moron most of the time I see you on the internet but apparently this was the one thing I should listen to you about because you were 250 percent right and that's a lot of right no matter how you do the math so you're welcome Rat Queens. Turn it around. Greatest comic book. All right. Surprisingly close. <laughs> um, this is so good. It's just so good. Um, this this smidgen. Uh, Betty the Smidgen, she's like a, 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 a halfling hobbity thing, is the greatest. This issue made me so happy because there is a picture of a cosplayer as that character. <laughs> that character, cosplayer. Alright, so, mm, just made me really happy to think that she's out there in real life. Be a little smidgeny. And as she says in this issue, let's get stabby. Uh, <laughs> and, and, shh, secrets. It's awesome. This book is hysterical, and yet, so it's not like, you know, like, oh, I don't like funny books. It's, it's hysterical the right way. You know, not like, oh, it's all done for laughs. It's 
This is like the greatest fantasy story ever. And and yeah, there's a you know, there's a scene you know that they're telling you, know, it's the people recognize the captain of the guard. Clearly, he has a past. So in the end, he tells Betty, he's like, look, what that assassin said. I know it looks bad. And she's like, uh, 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 we've all got secrets, Sawyer, believe it or not. And then she says, believe it or not, I homebrew illegal drugs for pocket money. He's like, uh, Betty, you do realize I'm captain. And she grabs him and puts her little finger over his mouth and goes, shh, secrets. <laughs> you know, it's like, he's just, I know you. And it's, and in the look on his face, you can see he's part amused and part, really, you know. <laughs> and it's, it's, this book is so much fun, and it's, uh, who draws this? Who, who are my peeps? Um, all right, so Curtis Weiss writes it, all right, and Rock Up Church, aside from having an awesome fucking name, um, is an awesome artist, and this book, this book is great, and you should really check this out, all right, I'm, I'm gonna get the damn trade for that, too, because I've got the issues, but I want the trade to be able to pull out and go, this is my book that I like to read. Huntress Power Girl, World's Finest, number 19, and they meet. Um, Power Girl's powers are still not doing good. She's got her companies in trouble, and she, she doesn't know what to make of it, so she makes the... She's finally got to just bite the bullet and go talk to our world Superman. Huntress is not having any better of a time, and is sitting around, and there's these kid and his father playing, you know, with a soccer ball, and she gets splashed by the water, and the kid's like, Daddy, Daddy, and she's like, no worries, I'll drive. And then she says, sometimes you need your daddy. And that's just sad. And then she goes and breaks into the bat cave. And you know, yeah, you go from sometimes I need you, you need your daddy to this is what happens when you go catch up to your daddy in, in, in this earth, is you're in a cage. Um, so yeah, and next issue begins, you know, he's like, you know, now you can explain yourself. She's like, it's a long story. <laughs> so he's this is, you know, we're going to see the reaction of a man who's still grieving from losing Damien to finding out he's got a sort of daughter. Sort of daughter? From pseudo daughter? Earth Dose. Um, Mark Wade and Dean, Hasp uh, Dean Haspiel's The Fox from uh, Marvel's Red, uh, from Archie's Red Circle. So good. So, so good. It's like. It's right up there with Daredevil, which is in here somewhere too. It, it's just so, so good, so Wade, so great. Uh, the backup story is uh, uh, it's, it's jammed Dimitri's uh, on uh, the Shield. It starts out with you know Pep's Bar, like Pep Comics. Yeah, look at them with the little, the little hidden gems. So, so good. Um, and then they, they always show you in the end, you know, these characters that they use, no matter how ridiculous you think a character is. There's their, you know, there's their ribbons. No, that character, here they are. And they're various, you know, Blue Ribbon comics and New Crusaders and all their different appearances. So, yes, Bob Phantoms, the, Bob Phantom, the Scourge of the Underworld. Ridiculous as that sounds. Actual guy. Inferno, the Fire Breather. A guy with a picture of, like, an Olympic torch on his shirt. And he belches flame. Actual guy from, uh, 1941. Um... Bob Phantom was from 1939, and of course, the, the Marvel, the Masked Gunman, also from uh, 1939. I just, they're good, they're so good. Superman, Wonder Woman, secrets out, everybody knows they smoochin'. Lex Luthor finds out in prison, he goes ballistic. Do, 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 do. Cat Grant broke the story, Clark Kent isn't happy, Wonder Woman's like, whatever's, you should just stop me in Clark Kent. Um, there is a great splash that shows, like, you know, Flash and Green Lantern's reaction, um, Apollo and I'm not sure which God's reaction, um, Tintin and Snowy's reaction, uh, they, they get to see something that looks a lot like, uh, like, uh, Goku and Based on the hair, I'm assuming that, uh, or that crazy side ponytail, uh, I'm assuming that's Bulma. <laughs> um, they, they find out, um, some supervillains find out, uh, you know, a bunch of people, you know, just 
Well, everybody finds out, but this is their reaction. Um, so, is 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 too good? Um, also, Zod starts being evil. It's 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 Charles Soul. I I, I I like what he's writing. The, the thing I'm I'm having, and this is just a personal me, is I'm tired of Zod at this point. They went for a long time with no Zod, but then, boom, 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 Zod's been re-Zodded. Like you just go through the past, you don't even have to go back that far. Just like the past five to ten years of just, you know, there was that whole Chris, uh, Chris um, there was that whole um, Donner and, and John's Zod story with, you know, with, he had the little son, then there was the return of Krypton, and then, you know, everything got new 52 but then there was the movie, and now there's this Zod, and if you go back just a little before that, there was Beardless Zod, Bearded Zod, this Zod, that Zod, you know, Zod in crazy armor, a Zod that wasn't Kryptonian, a Zod that was, a Zod from an alternate thing, Phantom Zone Zod, past histories. That's not for all seasons. Yeah, you know, there's so many Zods, all my Zod, I just, I just can't, uh, you know, Smallville Zod, 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 Zod. Zod's a great character, but come on, in bits and pieces, man. Bits and pieces. Just ease it back. Don't over Zod me. Hooey. Um, Suicide Squad 27. A little look into everybody's thoughts as to what's happening. Of course, um, Boomerang was sick as a kid. Um, and Deadshot is just my favorite no matter what. And look, there's, there's Warrant in one of those damn hockey style masks. It, well, his is more like, um, like, like, like motorbiking, <laughs> like motocross masks, but it's in, it's in the same family. Um, you also get, uh, I did kind of giggle, I don't know if they did it on purpose for Irony, but you've got Power Girl remembering being Supergirl on Earth 2 and talking about how her world was so simple, heroes were heroes, and life is just good. And I'm like, yeah, baby, you don't know what's going on on Earth 2 right now, where everybody's like dead, and Superman is the ultimate evil. So, mm -hmm. all the ironies. Um, Nightwing. Let me just tell you. All right, I know that with issue 30, Kyle Higgins is leaving. This makes me sad. But we're also up in the air as to what's happening to Nightwing post Forever Evil. They just revealed his identity to everybody, and in that bat Thanksgiving, bats giving teaser, there's no obvious Dick Grayson. There's a blonde guy everyone thinks could be him, but we don't know. But let me tell you how good of a writer Kyle Higgins is. Despite the fact that we know in the Forever Evil story, his ID has been revealed to everybody. The whole world knows. In this. This takes place before that. One person, and not even a major person, one person finds out his identity. And it's done so well that you're both concerned for where it's going to go and touched by how it's playing out, despite the fact that in the wake of the entire world knowing Dick Grayson equal Nightwing, we shouldn't care about one person finding out, because we know, you know, in like a week from this, everyone knows. But it's done so well that... I could still get caught up in this and just forget about everything. Um, and that is why no matter what happens, I will be saddened by no Kyle Higgins, Nightwing. Um, yeah, after number 30, I'll be, I'll be saddened. Um, Justice League America, Justice League of America, number 11, in the grip of Clayface. Basically, this is, um, it's good. Um, but I'll warn you, I also happen to be a fan of uh, of this, of Stargirl. And this is basically an ode to Stargirl. Um, Despero shows up. The guy with the big eye, not the little mouse. From the cartoon, Despero. And not Gary Elwes from uh, Psych. Um, so you can say Despero, if it makes you happy. But uh, yeah, Despero shows up. And Despero plus Martian Manhunter always equals fight! Yeah. So... That's the Ravian. Harbinger number 20. Cats out of the bag. Um, imagine the WikiLeaks of all the Super secret fish. organizations in in Harbinger world. So, um, you know, the Harbinger Corps, the, the Harbinger organization, and um, 
Project Rising Spirit and, you know, all the schematics for the implants for the hardcore, you know, all leaked by this kid that is now running with, um, with our crew of Renegades while Harada basically just comes out and tells the world, yeah, I got powers. No, you can't do anything about it. Um, he's like corporate Magneto. He's like, look, I don't have to take you over and, you know, get all... <laughs> You can't stop me, so I'm not even going to bother letting you try. Go home now. And uh, since he can control their mind, they do. You know, it's just, <laughs> you lost. Goodbye. Um, he's the Magneto Magneto wishes he could be. Um, Archer and Armstrong, so good. Uh, a little touching breakthrough in the reparations of the damaged relationship between Archer and, Arms uh -uh, Archer and Armstrong. Uh, it's leading into the bloodshot um, hardcore crossover with Project Rising Spirit is sending uh, Bloodshot and Hardcore after Archer and Armstrong. So we're going to end up with Mission Improbable and uh, that kicks off here and it's just really good. Um, right after Quantum and Woody, I think this is my second favorite um, value book at the Mo. Daredevil number 35. Oh boy. I see now, I mean, I suspected, but I see now the full, uh, as the picture is revealed to me of what's going to cause the end of this book and the launching of the new one with um, Daredevil in, in Cal California, because, um, yeah, he's burning some bridges, Matt Murdock, the lawyer, not for long, because, uh, yeah, he's finally going to tackle head on the is he, isn't he Daredevil rumor that haunts him every single day. And it's it's all for his own moral, his, his strong moral compass, and the best way he can to, to help Foggy from uh, the underhanded play of the the, 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 the the Brotherhood of Serpents that he's after. So, so Mark Wade, so good, so so good. Um, Disney Kingdom Seekers of the Weird number one. I'll confess, I bought this. For one reason alone, that is Carl Moline. Um, it's Carl, so I had to buy it. Plus, Carl showed me the pages for this. I saw a sneaky peek. I saw a sneaky peek before a long time ago. Bam, bam, and it was gorgeous because it's Carl. Um, Story-wise, it's good. Um, it's a first issue, so there's a lot of setup and whatever. Uh, I think the story, some of the story was a, was a little. Um, that little clunk that you get when something's going. It's a mini-series. Um, what's interesting is I did not know what this was based upon. And really, this is based off of Raleigh Crumb's guy. He, he designed a lot of stuff for Disney. And um, this actually features the oft-talked-about um, Museum of Weird, which was going to be something that they were going to make at the Disney parks. But... Um, Walt Disney died and it just never came through um, and uh, apparently um, Raleigh Crump designed all these things and he designed the things that were going to be in, you know, that were in like the Haunted Mansion and he, he made all that stuff and he had a whole bunch of other stuff that Walt Disney said, no, let's, let's put this, let's make a whole separate exhibit just for this weird stuff, let's just make it like this museum of weird. Um, and it, it never happened but that, that features into here and even the Uncle, Uncle Roland, I can only imagine, is is a, a a nod to you know to Raleigh, um, but yeah. So 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 the story is good. The the idea is intriguing, and uh, and you got Carl Malina, so it's worth it. It's a this is number one of. It doesn't tell me here. That'd be too easy. It's like I don't know. It's like a it's somewhere between like four to four or five issues, so you can even get the trade if you want, but either way, it's worth checking out. It's some cool Disney original. Um, Batman Little Gotham, so good. My students were looking at this because, um, okay, that Nightcrawler panel is, is one of the best panels, but you want to see one of the most beautiful panels you'll ever see? Magic Hands, show them. Um, I give to you Little Ivy in Autumn. She hates fall. I hate it. And look at that. That's 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 some beautiful stuff. Dustin Wynn really oh, 
it's just beautiful. And yeah, the, the whole idea behind this first story is, you know, Ivy likes winter, she loves spring, she loves summer, fall, all her plants just kind of, you know, it, it, she says, it's as if we all give up in the fall, nothing to hang on to and nothing to care for, so she just blah. So of course Harley and Catwoman decide to get her out of it, snap her out of it. Joker tries to help, um, but he's, he's useless. You get a great, you know, you know, there's a line with Harley saying, uh, you know, clown's not too bright, see? <laughs> As a, the Joker brought her cut flowers. <clears throat> and uh, it didn't quite work the way, you know, he expected. Then there's a great story with um, Alfred's got to do some cleanup. Damien doesn't want to. So he goes on an exploration because he starts following Alfred and thinks he's up to something. And it all turns out to be an elaborate ruse that gets all the kids together and ends up with Katana, Damien, and uh, and Red Ramen doing most of the cleanup because the younger kids get the hardest job. So, you know, Babs, Dick, and uh, Jason, they're like, yeah, thank God we're grown up. We don't have to do all, all the, the dirty work. So that's good. And then from IDW and Darby Pop, um, Indestructible, number two, this book is hysterical. The art is gorgeous. It's like um, it's like animation quality. It is so so good. And the idea is this guy. This is the one where a, a guy stopped, uh, interrupted a bank robbery, got shot, but it hit his phone. Now he gets this big bruise, but he gets up and walks away. Everyone assumes because it's a world of superheroes that he's a new superhero. Um, so in this issue, he's he's been arrested because he's not registered. And yet superheroes have to be registered with the FBI. Um, he fled the scene. He's like, I think it was in shock. They're like, you know you have to register. He's like, what are you talking about? So um, a representative of the big superhero team shows up and says, look, uh, you know, you can't hold him. You're not charging him with anything. He's coming out. Offers him a membership on the team. His roommate is taking it to whole new levels. He's like, his roommate sold all of his stuff. He's like, you know, people wanted everything. You this, that, you know, your love letters. He's like, you gave away my love letters? He's like, sold. Sold your love letters. And he hands him money and goes, and 33% of that is yours. And it's like, <laughs> so his roommate sold his stuff and is only giving him 33%. So that's awesome. Um, the guy, his brother calls him like, you're not a hero. You just love attention. What the hell are you up to? Click. You know, he's getting, his whole world is turned upside down. Um, plus there's a major supervillain, Stingray, on the loose. Apparently she's a bit of a nut. And uh, everyone thinks this guy has powers. But he doesn't. They're walking through the park, him and his roommate, and this this guy and his girlfriend are walking, and they're like, "Oh my God, isn't that?" And the guy walks up and just punches him in the stomach. The, the guy doubles over. He's like, "Oh," because he's not invulnerable. But you know, you can b get yourself into believing anything. So everyone's ignoring the fact that he's, you know, getting half carried to a, a seat. But the guy's walking over to his girlfriend, like, "Oh my God, it's like hitting a brick wall. I can barely feel my hand," you know, because you know, you'll believe whatever you want. So good, so much fun. Check that out. I believe it's just, it's just like three or four issues. So, you know, it, it's it's uh, it's another nice short little whatevs. But um, but yeah, it's good. All right, that'll do it for this week. I miss you already, interwebs. Say bye, everybody. I blinked. Ah!